who's going to win the upcoming election? I'm sure we all want to know the answer to this, and lots of us turn to political polls to figure this out. But are those polls worth much? Can they really tell us who voters plan to vote for? I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode of Data Demystified, we'll talk about poll accuracy and reliability, two related concepts that can help us understand how better to read political polls. There are lots of different political polls to look at, and lots of elections coming up. But the one on most people's minds is for the presidency of the United States. When figuring out who's going to win the presidential election, there's a lot to consider. First, the popular vote isn't what determines the election outcome. Instead, the US system uses the Electoral College, which we've become all too familiar with in recent years. Second, because of the Electoral College, not every vote matters in the same way. Voters in states that overwhelmingly favor one political party over another will vary a bit in how they vote, but since all but Nebraska and Maine allocate all of their electoral votes to whichever candidate wins the majority of votes in that state, there's really not much to predict. For example, for the last 30 years, California has allocated all of its electors to the Democrat candidate, and for nearly the last 40 years, South Carolina has allocated all of its electors to the Republican candidate. That's not to say that this can't change, but with these Democrat and Republican strongholds, Polls in these states are interesting, but they won't tell us much about who's going to be president in a couple of months. So to make this interesting, we need to focus on swing states. These are states where voters are much more evenly split between political parties, and the outcome of the election is far from certain. We can tell the same basic story for any of these swing states, but let's focus on Florida. With its 29 electors, it's one of the most important swing states in nearly every recent presidential election. So let's have a look. This is a chart from mid-August that one of my favorite political sites, 538, puts out. They track a number of polls run by places like Quinnipiac University, Fox News, The New York Times, and quite a few more. They then pull them together to give an overall picture of where voters' minds are. And, as you can see, those minds change. According to 538, the best estimate as of August 17th when I filmed this video is that 50% of Floridians will vote for Biden and 45% will vote for Trump. And now we can ask ourselves two related questions. How accurate and how reliable are those polls? Those might sound like the same question, but they're not. Accuracy is about how well those polls reflect reality, something we deeply care about. Reliability, however, is about how well those polls measure the same thing time and time again, something we think a lot less about, but something that is also critically important to understanding how useful these polls actually are. So let's unpack those two ideas by taking a big step back and first understanding the ways in which any measurement instrument can be right or wrong. Before we do that, if you like what you see, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. I'm also trying really hard to reach as many people as I can so that more of us can better live and engage in this data-rich world. So if you could tweet, post on Facebook or Reddit, or just share this video with anyone you know, I would greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's get back to understanding political polls. Let's start with accuracy. The short version is that accuracy for any measurement instrument, be it a political poll, a thermometer, or a college entrance exam, is an indication of how well that instrument reflects reality. For a political poll, that would be how well the poll reflects how people will actually vote. For a thermometer, that would be how well it actually tells us the temperature outside. And for a college entrance exam, that would be how well it predicts something like success once admitted to college. We want all of those to be accurate, otherwise, what's the point? If a political poll tells us that a candidate is going to win, but then they lose, that was a pretty inaccurate and not so useful poll. So let's look at a different example to really understand what accuracy is. Let's imagine we want to build a wind farm. Basically, we want to put up a bunch of wind turbines to generate electricity, and we want to know where we should do that. Easy enough. Oversimplifying a bit, we want to build somewhere where there's enough space and, critically, where it's windy. So we take our trusty anemometer, which is just the fancy word for a wind to speed measurement tool, and go collect some samples. We then use the samples about wind speed to help us pick a location where it's windy enough to build. As luck would have it, we find a location where there isn't much to get in the way of construction and the wind speeds are quite high. But are we sure that our anemometer was correct? More specifically, was it accurate in telling us about wind speeds in the area? Let's see what could have gone wrong. First, we're gonna build a bunch of wind turbines, so hopefully we took measurements in lots of places. If by dumb luck, we only took measurements in a few places that happen to have high winds, and fail to realize that some of the other places we plan to build actually have relatively low winds, well, we'd be in trouble. Our conclusion about wind speeds would be based on a sample of data that only reflects a small portion of what's really happening. As in, there's variability in wind speed, but we only managed to measure a small part of that variability. That's a problem. Second, 
We're relying on our anemometer to give us a specific bit of information, actual wind speed. But what if our anemometer is broken in a very particular way? What if someone over-lubricated the bearings on the fan that measures wind speed, and now our anemometer reports wind speeds that are actually much higher than they really are? It still picks up differences in wind speeds, but it's consistently telling us that the winds are faster than they really are. That's a problem too. These two problems, one of sampling and one of correctness, are loosely problems of accuracy. How well does our tool tell us about what we want to know? Where to build our wind farm? Tying this back to political polling, we can have the exact same two problems. A perfect poll would have what is known as a perfectly representative sample of all people who will actually go out and vote on election day. But that's something really hard to achieve. Some people say they'll vote, but then they don't. Some people either refuse to answer political polls or just don't have the time to do so. And some people change their mind between when they take the poll and when they actually go cast their vote on election day. These are the same types of errors as in our wind farm example where we only measure the wind in a few places. When the people we poll are not a reflection of the entire landscape of voters, our polls will be as inaccurate as if we measure the wind speed only in one or two locations. And even if we do get a representative sample of voters, the other problem can also creep in. The poll itself can be broken, just like our anemometer was. The questions asked of voters may not be phrased well. If an actual person rather than an automated system is ministering the poll, they could make an honest mistake in recording the intentions of the voters. And those polled could lie about who they plan to vote for. These would all be examples of how the poll itself could be broken, just like our anemometer was. The anemometer helps us determine where to build our wind farm, and the poll helps us determine who's going to win an election. If they give us incorrect readings on either of these topics, they aren't all that useful. Taken together, these types of errors of accuracy makes the science of polling quite difficult, though not impossible. Indeed, political pollsters never tell you exactly what a candidate's lead is, but rather they tell you their best guess, plus or minus some margin of error. That margin of error, the details of which are a topic for a different video, is the pollsters admitting that their polls aren't perfectly accurate. They're not trying to hide this fact, but are rather giving you their best estimate at how accurate their polls are. If you see something like a 3% margin of error, that means that the pollster believes that their estimate for what fraction of votes a candidate is going to get is whatever it is, plus or minus 3 percentage points. The bigger that margin of error, the less accurate is that poll. So now that we have a grasp of accuracy, let's turn to reliability. Basically, reliability is how consistent a measurement instrument of any kind is, regardless of its accuracy. Let's go back to our wind farm example to make that clear. Imagine now we have three different locations to choose from, and we have to make a choice. We are committed to build the wind farm, and all that's left is picking which of these locations is the windiest. So we again grab our anemometer and take some readings. This time, we're not going to be naive enough to just take a few measurements per area and instead take lots and lots of measurements to make sure that we have a good and representative sample of wind speeds in each of these areas. So that's not an issue anymore. But unfortunately, our anemometer still has the same problem from before. It's reading all wind speeds as higher than they really are. It turns out in this example, that's not a big deal. We are committed to building our wind farm and just need to pick one of these three locations. As long as our anemometer is consistently giving us the same fast readings, we can still make that determination. For example, if our anemometer tells us that the wind is always 10 miles per hour faster than it really is, but tells us that location B has the fastest winds, we still know where to build, even if our wind farm might not be quite as great as we hoped for. On the other hand, if our anemometer just gives us crazy different readings every single time we use it, that would be pretty useless for making this choice. In other words, as long as our measurement tool is consistently giving us the same readings, even if those readings are inaccurate, we call that tool reliable. It might be inaccurate, but it is consistently inaccurate, and we can use that consistency. So let's again come back to our political poll. If we think our polls are inaccurate, that's a problem if looking at just one poll. But as long as we think that the source of that inaccuracy is constant, we can still look at polls, but now we have to look at trends. In other words, if a poll consistently shows that a candidate is more popular than they really are, but that popularity is trending down over time, we can actually be reasonably confident that the trend in our polls is a reflection of the trend in reality. Looking at this forecast of voter shares in Florida, the trend isn't crystal clear. Florida is still very much a swing state. But over the past six months, Trump's likelihood of winning the state has gone down. That is almost certainly a real trend, even if the absolute likelihood of Trump winning isn't well captured by those numbers. In other words, if the polls are wildly inaccurate, they don't actually reflect how voters will vote in November, we can still, looking at the trend, say that the share of votes for Trump has gone down. 
Is that trend big enough to result in Biden winning Florida? Well, if the polls are accurate, then yes. If they're not, then we don't know. But again, we do know that the actual direction of change of who voters will vote for as measured by a reliable, even if not accurate, set of polls is what you see on the screen right here. Are the trends we saw in Florida going to continue? I don't know any more than anyone else does. The world is chaotic, especially today, and voters are often fickle. But when trying to predict who's going to win an election, consider how accurate the polls are, which is a reflection of how well they reflect reality. But even if they don't reflect reality well, if they are reliable, you can read the trend lines to see where things are heading. They won't be a perfect view into the future, but they're the best thing we have. More generally, I hope you see that what we have here is a recipe for understanding how any measurement tool can predict anything. If a tool is accurate, it will reflect reality well. If it is reliable, it will give you the same measurement time and time again, even if that measurement is itself wrong. If you found this interesting, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. Also, if there are other topics in the world that involve data and you want to get a better intuitive understanding of them, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to create content meant just for you, my viewers.